that's something for the future um, of gaming. Then we have the maximum pre-rendered frames, which is fairly important and not a lot of people even know what it does. Uh, basically, it limits the number of you know pre-rendered frames. Um, what this does, or what this will translate to, is if you lower this setting, you will uh, notice an increased response rate um, of your mouse, for example. Especially your mouse, because if you use a gamepad, you don't really notice that much of a difference when the frame rate drops. You mainly notice it with a mouse, because it's very sensitive. Most newer mouses uh, are very sensitive, so if the frame uh, rate starts to drop, you'll immediately, immediately notice it when you use a mouse. Um, so this is particularly useful for games that are um, pretty new, uh, pretty heavy, um, and which you use your mouse with. If you increase this value, you will notice a delay in response. Um, but this doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Because if you set this on a higher uh, option, um, basically what this does is it smooths out the loss of frame rate. So if you uh, view, um, for example, if you're playing Batman Bar uh, Arkham City and you start flying over the city and you see you know, a huge part of the city, your frame rate might drop a bit. Um, but because of this technology, because of the pre-rendered frames and increasing the value, you will uh, less likely notice the difference between the frame rates. So that's basically, in a nutshell, um, what it does. So if you um, notice a lot of changes um, in performance, you know, a lot of frame drops, then you should increase this level or increase uh, the, the amount of pre-rendered frames. And if you notice that your mouse responds very laggy, you know, um, for example, in Mass Effect 2, that's a big problem. Mass Effect 2 has a pretty bugged up um, engine for the PC anyway. Um, I usually, for Mass Effect 2, I put it on 1, and for any other game, it's usually around 6, um, because once again, it is pre it, it's pretty useful if you have a change of scenery where the frames might drop and you won't notice the difference in controls as much. So the bottom line is keep this as high as possible unless you start noticing um, uh, lag in the input, so mainly your mouse. Then we have the multi-display mixed GPU acceleration. Well, this is obviously only of use if you have multiple displays. Um, I put this on single display performance mode because I only have one uh, monitor. Um, the power management mode is fairly self-explanatory. Most applications use the adaptive setting by default, but I prefer maximum performance actually for the obvious maximum performance uh, because I really do prefer performance over anything. Um, so just set this on maximum performance on every game you play. Um, then we go to the anis anisotropic <laughs> sample optimization. Um, basically, you should just turn this on by default. And it goes hand in hand with the negative LOD bias. Um, if you put this one on allow and you set this one on on, you could notice some shimmering on objects that are far away. So basically you'll see two different textures trying to overlap each other constantly and that creates a sort of flickering effect, um, a sort of shimmering effect. Um, this really is game uh, dependent, so just try it out, you see what, 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 uh, what works. Um, but for maximum performance you should put this on on and put this on allow. That's for better performance unless you see uh, some strange flickering in the distance, then you should put this on off and this on clamp. And the quality, well, it kind of speaks for itself. I always set this on high performance because once again, I love high performance in games at least. Um, 
this should always be put on on because games rarely use tri uh, trilinear um, optimization anyway it's a very very old technique threaded optimization basically you should put it on auto um, but if you're sure that the game supports multiple processors then you should put it on, on to enforce the threaded optimization but if you use this option for an older uh, older game like for example quake 1 or quake 2 you might get random crashes or random frame drops so um, it, it basically auto is the best way to go but if you're sure a new game supports multiple processors just set it on, on to enforce it basically this offloads some of the calculations to uh, it redirects it to the uh, video card um, or to the CPU I'm sorry from the video card to the CPU uh, triple buffering is only of use if you use VSync and this is the part I like most because uh, there's a lot of controversial uh, opinions concerning uh, vertical sync um, if you want performance you should force it off you should never ever use vertical sync if you worry about frames per second it is that simple there is no discussion possible uh, because vsync is basically um, a way to mitigate the delay between uh, your monitor and the display adapter and the CPU who is already pre-rendering certain frames um, so basically it's a patch up for uh, a problem that doesn't really exist um, the problem lies in the, uh, the the traveling of the information between the video card and the monitor there uh, that's where the problem arises um, so for example if you were to put it on you will immediately immediately notice a drop in frames uh, per second for obvious reasons because the vertical sync is maxed is capped uh, to the maximum refresh rate of your monitor on that particular resolution so that's very important that last bit on that particular resolution for example I'll show this along I don't know if where was it yeah this is my native resolution 1680 times 1050 so my maximum refresh rate is 16 her 60 hertz so what this means is um, my monitor refreshes 60 times in one second so if you put vsync on you will have a maximum frame rate which is not the same as a refresh rate you will have a maximum frame rate of 60 so you will never be able to get uh, to, to get higher than that which isn't that big of a problem really because 60 frames per second you know it's perfectly fine um, but the problem arises when uh, once you start having a lot of stuff happening on your screen so uh, basically simply put when the going gets tough when your processor and your your video card really have to uh, sweat so to speak uh, the vsync starts um, uh, causing trouble um, it's oops I don't know what, what the hell happened now okay apparently I changed my resolution and everything's messed up now but it doesn't really matter the point is um, it's hard to explain why vsync is so uh, annoying it's not because of the cap in frames per second but it has to do with um, performance just purely performance and if you do uh, a, a, a benchmark test in any any game it doesn't matter which uh, I would suggest you do a benchmark with vsync on and vsync off and then see the difference in results and you'll see massive differences um, and basically everyone who actually knows what they're talking about will claim the same you should just put vsync off because once again vsync uh, issues are, uh, are not really existent they're, they're just a nuisance for the user um, so that's basically it uh, once again you should really try it out yourself 
uh, put VSync on in a game and then try uh, try the game, see how your mouse reacts to the screen. And that's the biggest biggest uh, improvement. If you turn VSync off, you will immediately uh, feel that your mouse actually responds real time to what happens on screen. And that's that last sentence basically sums it all up. Um, you will you will notice uh, an increase in responsiveness. A massive increase in responsiveness. Um, so that's basically it. We have, yeah, we've basically discussed all the possible options. Um, the physics configuration, that's probably an important one too. Um, you should always, always put it on auto select. Always. And here's why. Some engines, some game engines, do not uh, support. Um, outsourcing the physics calculations and what this means is um, the game has not been optimized for physics uh, 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 calculation by uh, uh, your hardware by the, the video card uh, some games have physics but it's emulated so it's not real physics it's not actually using your video card it's just emulating it um, and here's the thing if you s force your video card to do all physics calculations, even in games that do not support physics, native physics processing, basically what you'll be, what you'll be, be doing is y first, all the physics calculations are being done by your processor. Then all those cal calculations are sent to your video card. And then your video card forces itself basically to recalculate all those physics um, calculations. And this obviously causes a lot of latency, a lot of lag, um, uh, because you know the software isn't optimized uh, for, for, for usage of hardware that natively supports physics. So you should definitely always set it on auto select, even with newer games, because some newer games don't support native physics uh, support by the GPU. Uh, and once again, they will emulate the physics um, and that will go through your CPU. Um, so you should definitely, definitely always set it on, set it on auto select. Um, even if all you do is play the newest games, uh, just keep it on auto select because you never know if a game is optimized for true native physics calculations or not. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial. There's been a lot of talking, um, so I hope you guys managed to um, at least learn something. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe and see.